this. Yes. Like, oh my God, this is, this is unlike anything that I've ever even could dream or imagine or think about. It is, yeah. it is amazing. You, it's indescribable. Yes. <laughs> but even more importantly also is that God is going well with us. Yeah. He's going, that's, that's what's blowing my mind. I can, I'll be able to, he's going to walk with us. Yes. He's going to be here with us. Yes. That is amazing. You can shake Jesus's hand. Yes. Yes. Sure. yes. <laughs> you can give him a hug. You could meet Michael, the archangel. That, yeah, yeah, that, that blows my mind. I mean, I, I can get used, I can get used to the, to the transparent goal, but to see Jesus every day, <laughs> every day and walk with him. Say, what up, Jesus? <laughs> what's, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> you probably gonna have to talk to everybody differently because the people right. today, like, what up, Lord? <laughs> and then the people from the 1600s, thou willest, my Lord. He'll be like, oh my gosh, it's too many. <laughs> we just speak this new language and everybody be like, hey, Wow, that's, that, that's amazing. That's amazing. It is amazing. And look, as spectacular as heaven is, and I think that all of us can say that we had a surface understanding of heaven mm -hmm. previously. It's in the scripture, but it's taught surface. I'm gonna go there and you have all these sayings that don't, that just don't, I was thinking about this today. This one of my favorite songs, he's my will, he's my, will. in the middle of a will. That is not true. Hmm. Right, God right. Is not the wheel in the middle of the wheel. Middle of the wheel. <laughs> an angel. That is an angel that they were taught. They were seeing. They were seeing one of the cherubim in one of the chariots of fire. It was a wheel in the middle of the wheel, and it was it was described as a wheel in the middle of a wheel, and it was two others next to him, and the angel could go side to side of, and they all moved at his beckoning and then god was sitting on the throne he's not the wheel in the middle think about that the whole premise of that part of the song is he's my wheel. i know some of y'all might be mad at me that's my jam it is my jam but it is not true this is where i want us to understand culture yes. and kingdom mm -hmm. I want to know the truth and then if you give me a song and it ain't right i'll know it's not right but it's say okay right. i get what they say and god was there when he saw the wheel in the middle of the wheel at the river chabar don't put that part in the scripture that it was right. at the river chabar and he saw the lord and he saw these angels and one of them and the, the angels were in wheels in the middle of a wheel hmm. boom so we need to know what heaven is like and i think you guys got it if you don't you can go back and look now we're going to talk about hell hmm. we're not going to talk about anything that's the the name of the series one word hell now as spectacular as heaven is mm -hmm. hell is diabolical the difference between heaven and hell is there's only one way into heaven but there's a million ways yeah. into hell. We will be able to, once we go to heaven, we will have access to go in and out. That's the scripture. We will come in and out and have pasture. We won't be stuck in New Jerusalem. We'll be able to go around. We'll be able to see the new world. We'll be able to fellowship with the people here on earth. There's a million ways into hell. There are no ways out. None. Matter of fact, the, 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 the lowest point of a, the lowest way of getting into hell, the, the easiest way is not murdering someone, not killing someone, not doing any of that. It's just managing your own life without God. Mm -hmm. It's punishable by death. But the thing is, is human beings, we don't understand how God sees sin Mm -hmm. Every sin in his eyesight is punishable by death. Every, yeah. But I just, I told a white lie, death. What? That's unfair. Guess what? He does not care. He's the king. <laughs> he 
He makes the rules. In America, I heard President Obama say this, and this is exactly what's done. He said, if you want to change things, he said, what you do is you find people who are of like mind. And then what you do is you all come together and find more people of like mind until there's enough people that you can now go into Congress in different places and change the way laws are. And then over time, people will just slowly accept it because what we'll do is we'll start, once you change the laws, they'll start doing a, a campaign. So now in your movies and then the videos and then the mm -hmm. your commercials, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, you know what? It's almost yeah. like Jesus said, woe to you when your light is dark. What you think is light right. is actually dark. And that's what you do if you want to get something done. God looks at it and says, I don't care how many of you all believe it. If every single one of you believe it and it's not of me, I will mm -hmm. send every single one of you to the pit. Because you will not defile that place that is so beautiful. That's he will right. not let anything in that defiles. All right. So now we're going to talk about. What we're gonna look at some of the anatomy of hell. We're gonna show you how you go to hell. I know that sounds crazy, but like <laughs> how you transport to hell. The Bible talks about that. We're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about the different um, the different main sections of hell. I, the Bible does not describe the ins and outs of how they're gonna to torture. It does describe a lot of it, like their worm, a created type of creature that torments you, fire, brimstone. It does that suffocation, all of that, but. It doesn't explain like, oh, the, it's a room on the left side of hell that's used for this. It doesn't do that. But it, give us the, it gives us the main portion. And let me say this. It is not just one place. Hmm. So what I mean by that is that place has sections that are, that are designed for specific things. Okay? So number one, how do you transport to hell when we die what happens the bible talks about us opening our eyes in hell not us but those who are in sin we're going to read that later but the bible teaches that we go through gates mm -hmm. one to heaven one to to hell mm -hmm. go ahead read it matthew 16 and 18 mm -hmm. and the scripture reads and i say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates of hell. People think that he's talking about some, you walk up to hell and there's some, you know what I'm talking about, your right. brain start thinking, and there's some gates, and you know, let me out. Like, like <laughs> you might be able to climb it if you get some superpower and get up out of there and be like, ooh, I'm up out of it. No, that's not what he's talking about. A gate is a place of entrance or exit, right? The Bible has multiple names for them. I guess today the best, the closest way to call it would be portal. That gives you a totally different thought process, yep. right? Mm -hmm. it, it, it deals with access. The Bible calls them multiple different things and there's different gates or portals. G mm -hmm. The Bible calls them windows. When God says, will I not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing? The Bible talks about that. The Bible talks about the everlasting doors. This is what Jesus will enter into when he comes from heaven to earth for the rapture. Lift up your head, O ye gates. Mm -hmm. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the what? And the king of glory. King of Before glory. He, when he created the universe, God created transportation access points throughout the universe. So the angels, when they fly here, don't have to be like, so M Michael, how long do we get before we get to earth? Just another two or 3 million years. We moving at the speed of light. We'll get <laughs> right. Woo. I'm so tired. Can you drive next? I'm tired of this chariot of fire that went out. Right. Mm -hmm. All you got is we're a chariot of smoke. Cause we've been in the universe. No, they're not driving long distance. Ooh, it's going to take a long time to get to heaven. No, you're not going to do it. Jesus said it like this. There is, he said, enter in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, mm -hmm. and broad is the path that leads to destruction. This is the gate of hell. And many there be that go in threat. They're mm -hmm. playing right now, having fun. Oh, they don't know that they're on a road. You remember that song, I'm on a highway to hell? They're on a road, a path, a way 
Mm. And that way at the end, if you could just, if they could just for one second, catch a glimpse of the people who are at the front of the line as they fall into eternity, into hell, they would say, let me go over there to the narrow way. See, on, on Satan's path, you got all different ways. You got, well, I like to lie. I like to fornicate. I like to do this. I like to do that. It's a whole bunch of stuff. But on Jesus' side, there's only one way. Mm -hmm. Jesus told him who it was. It's not a place. It's not a path. It's a person. For Jesus said, I am the way. Way, yes. Hallelujah. Truth and the life. And the no life. man. Mm. I don't care how rich, I don't care if you're a pastor, I don't care if you're a preacher, I don't care if you're an evangelist, I don't care if you've been in church your whole life. No man can come to the Father unless they come through me. Jesus said, look, the gates of hell will not prevail against the kingdom of God, but the church, excuse me, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Mm -hmm. That is not a church building. That's right. He's talking about the people. Is the people. Mm -hmm. You can serve your church building and spend all of the rest of your days doing work for the church. But then you find out, son, that wasn't the church. You spent all of your time, my mm -hmm. daughter, working on something that was not me. My church is a people that yes. if you burn every building down on earth, the church of Jesus Christ will still stand. Well, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, Christ the <laughs> solid rock I stand. Mm -hmm. All other ground is what? Is sinking sand? Sink. <laughs> Say it again. They're all other ground is sinking sand. <laughs> That's what the song does. The song says it just like that. We're built upon a rock that when the winds and the waves come, we don't move with the times. This is the difficulty. I'm hearing pastors on TV saying that they're evolving their viewpoint on issues in the world. Right. There's no evolving issue, evolving to nothing. Come on. Oh, true. So you're saying what God said is not good enough, so mm -hmm. you need to evolve. Evolution means get better. What God already said was perfect. Right. His word is settled in heaven. His word is pure. His word is right. So look, when, when we die, our souls literally... Mm -hmm. We'll find out later that for the believer, the angel of the Lord comes and gets us. Mm -hmm. If an angel don't show up and you die... <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Jesus, let me get one more word out so I can forgive my sin. <laughs> Amen. You know, I was thinking about that. People, they live their life saying, I'm going to just wait to the end and say, Father, forgive me for all my sins. He's going to see straight through your lie. You don't want to repent. You just don't want to go mm -hmm. to hell. Mm -hmm. You don't want to serve Jesus. It ain't fun to you. It's not natural to you. But when a person gets saved, how many of y'all know when you really repented, all of a sudden the stuff that didn't you didn't like, you start liking it. Am I right about it? Do you know what I'm talking about? You yeah. like the word of God had gotten boring. Oh, I believe the word. But then all of a sudden it became flesh to you. You start looking and saying, oh my God, it's nothing like it. I want to spend every moment with Jesus, talking about him, thinking about, praying with him. You know, but those people who are not really saved, they don't want to go to hell. But look, they don't want to go to heaven either. Mm -hmm. If they could stay here forever and turn up, they would. And that is a Classic sign that you are not saved. Woo, man, that's good. All right, yes. so look at this. Re let's look at it. Who, who, who controls the gate? Read that for us, Sister Trina. Revelations 1 and 18. Mm -hmm. I am he that liveth. Who is that talking? That's Jesus talking. That's Jesus talking. All right, what did he say? And was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Jesus didn't say amen to himself. <laughs> you know, he's saying, he's saying, amen. Amen. <laughs> have to amen for me. I'm just going to say amen. Go ahead. What did he say, sis? And have the keys of hell and of death. I'm in control of hell and death. The Bible says when Jesus wrote, before he rose from the dead, he descended down into hell. He yes. descended down into the lower parts of the earth. And he says that he took the keys of death and hell. It didn't say he took it from Satan. Mm -hmm. Oh. He didn't say that. In other words, he went down and took control over it. <laughs> he was wow. able to take control over the, the, the this place called hell, which Satan had really gained access and power over because he had convinced man to go into sin. All of them were going down there. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about that in, in a minute, how Jesus emptied hell. 
hmm. after his resurrection. We're gonna talk about what we're gonna talk about the history of hell. I know this mm -hmm. sounds crazy, but it's in the Bible. When you read it, you're gonna be like, it was there and I read it before. <laughs> this was, that's what kills me. It's like, I actually read this before and didn't know it, all right? So Jesus has the keys. That's why he could tell us that the gates of hell will not prevail. This means that when you die, as a, a real believer, you're not going there. Hmm. So stop living your life like you're preventing yourself from going to hell. You're not, look at this. You're not even, even causing yourself to go to heaven. No. Nope. <laughs> did it for you. He has the keys. You can sit there and dance and, and do all the, Lord, whew, let me in. Look, look, don't I look safe? Mm. You know, you do something, something face. He's like, that doesn't work. Well, what about if I read my Bible every day? That doesn't work, do, but you don't want me to read it? Yeah, we don't do things to not go to hell. Mm -hmm. We don't do things to try to make it in. We do it because we, we do it for the same reason Jesus died, because he loved us. For the love of the people. He loved us and now I love him because he first loved me and gave me this salvation that I don't deserve. I should go straight through the gates of hell to hell, but instead he gave me grace he put the blood of Jesus on a filthy creature and cleansed me and made me white as snow. And now I get a right to go to a place I don't deserve, to walk on streets I don't deserve, to bathe. I know you're not supposed to bathe. They're probably going to tell me, don't bathe in the river of life. But I'm going to be in there like, my neck, can you hand me the back screen? They're going to be like, boy, you don't need to take a shower. You clean. Okay, thank you, Jesus. I'll put back my room. Amen. <laughs> right? I'm going to go up there. I'm gonna, you go, you're going to get access to what you don't deserve. It's because he owns the keys and he's your father. Now, I'm not talking mm -hmm. to the fake believers. Mm -hmm. You got to check your birth certificate. Just because you're claiming that's your daddy. You don't look nothing like him. You don't smell like him. You don't act like him. You don't hold your, your cup like him. You don't do nothing like him, but that's my daddy. I'm going to heaven. The Lord is like, I don't know them. They ain't my son. That's not my daughter. I never knew them. They just came to the building. They, they have said in their minds, if I go to the building where the church is, thinking the building is the church, I'll go where the church goes. The devil is a lie. Mm -hmm. You just been, uh, uh, coming to service, attendance. All right, next point, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I wanna look at something. I want you to see this. So, but, but brother guy, let me ask you a question. I've learned that no devil in hell can stop what God is about to do in my life. Isn't that right? Hmm. That's a lie. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? The devil, no, the devil can't stop what God is doing. That's not the lie. It's the devil in hell. Right. Because the devil is not, okay, let me put my Detroit on. The devil ain't <laughs> in hell. No demon, no devil. The devil's, it, the devil is not in hell. Satan is not in hell. Mm -hmm. There are, watch me, there are specific angels that are in a portion of hell. You can write it down. The word hell has four words for it. I'll give them to you. The first is Hades. Some of y'all heard that before on movies. Go to the depths of Hades, right? It's a Greek word. Now these Greek words are just descriptions. I'm not sure what God calls it. He might call it something different, right? Sheol is the equivalent of Hades. Hades means the grave not necessarily where you burn, but they use it interchangeably with the place that you burn in as well. Mm -hmm. So you get it? It's like we use, we use some words for the same meaning, like sum, give me some chips, the sum of two plus two is four, right? They're spelled different, but sum is sum, right? Mm -hmm. So they use it in different, different ways, but it's usually meant for the grave, and for, that's why the Bible says he would not suffer Jesus to his body to remain in hell. It's not talking about where, like he was locked up in the pit of hell. It's talking about in the grave. In three days, he rose from the grave. 
right? Which they called it hell. Because if you died in sin and you went in the grave, that was it. You was going to the other part of it, which is, which is the fire, fire and brimstone one. The second word is Tartarus, T-A-R-T-A-R-U-S. This is where the demons, fallen angels, in the days of Noah, intermixed with women, human beings. You can read it in Genesis 6 on your own. And we'll look in a second uh, at uh, I don't think that's that's the incorrect scripture I gave to you. I think, Sister uh, Trina, I think it's Jude. <laughs> I know it's Jude. It's it's only one verse in Jude, but I got Second Peter on there, but that's not correct. Yeah. It's in okay. Jude, obviously Jude one. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Six. All right. Amen. The third, the third word. It's not a word for hell, but it is described in hell. It's called the gulf, G-U-L-F. Jesus talked about this. We're going to talk about it in a second. It's the history of how we have our current hell. It tells you what hell was in the Old Testament. Jesus tells that in depth. Nobody, the Jewish scholars didn't really know. They never really talk about hell a lot. They talk about it, but they didn't give description. Jesus gave a story and told about it. It's called the gulf. All right. And then finally, we have the word Gehenna. Mm. I think I'm spelling it right. It is G-E-H-E-N-N-A. It's a word that's used for hell. Mm -hmm. And it is the lake of fire. The lake of fire is not hell. Write that down. <laughs> I know you think I'm crazy, but I'm going to show you. I'm, you Look, you already know me. You're getting scripture and verse. That's going to tell you. Now, let's look at Tartarus. Where do I come up with this thing at? Read Jude. Read, read that one, Sister Trina. Jude uh, 6. 1, 6. Yep. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. So these, it says, he's talking about they kept not their first estate. They were an angelic beings that, some of y'all went through the angels course, right? Yes. The angels course, we described them and we, we, we told you all that angels have the ability to, I guess in 2021, we would call it shape shift. The Bible says Satan can transform himself into an angel of light. The Bible says we can entertain angels unaware. They look differently, but they can change their shape to look like a regular man. Well, these particular demonic entities, not all of them, and they were, and one was not Lucifer. Lucifer was not one of them. They decided to go down and be with women, human women. And the Bible says they left their first estate. The mm. Bible says he makes his angels spirits and his ministers flames of fire. So they can have tangibleness. You can touch an angel, but they can also translate themselves into, the, into spirit and function as a spirit. There was an angel when the prophet was going to speak against Israel, ba Balaam. He was going and an angel was standing in the road, getting mm -hmm. ready to kill him. He was in the spirit realm. And when because of that, the prophet didn't see him just riding mm -hmm. his donkey. But God sparing the prophet opened the donkey's eyes and he was like, yo, my man, it's something about the." And the donkey tried to move. And he finally he kept hitting the donkey, get back in the way. And then God just opened the mouth of the donkey. He said, man. Why are you hitting me? You about to get killed by this. I know he freaked out. Oh, Lord. <laughs> right. But this shows you that the angels can do that. These angels left their spiritual estate and went in unto women. Hmm. This is in the book of Genesis, chapter six. You can read it for yourself. And they, they polluted the DNA of man. This is why God chose Noah, because Noah was perfect, genetically perfect in his day, not spiritually perfect. We know that because he got drunk and was naked. You know, they <laughs> Noah had a couple of issues like everybody, but he was genetically perfect and pure. And God could start again with Noah, the grandson of Enoch, who walked with God. So mm -hmm. these angels are currently reserved 
in chains of darkness in hell mm -hmm. in a portion of hell called Tartars. They're not down there laughing and joking. They are on a schedule. All of the demons, you can write this down too. This is me giving you something. All of the demons are on a schedule. They're on a, they know it. They know that they are on a specific timeline for them to all be cast into the lake of fire and torment. When Jesus would show up, one of the normal things they would ask him, demons, are you come to torment us before the time? Mm -hmm. They know who's, who's gonna torment me. Jesus of Nazareth, not the one that they teach in Sunday school, who's basically sitting there and he has long hair and he doesn't do anything and he's so meek. Right. <laughs> I'm talking about the Jesus that looked at the dude who didn't want to come and follow him because he had to bury his daddy. He said, let the dead bury the dead. You follow me. What would you do if I said that to you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, apostle, my, um, my father just died and, um, I'm not gonna be able to come. Man, let the dead bury the dead. You come with me. <laughs> I'll never see you again. Look, that'll be the last time I see you. <laughs> Look at that. So that tells me one thing. Some of us would not be able to deal with Jesus if he was standing right here talking, because right. he was no right. joke. He looked at the preachers and called them a generation of vipers. He called them a bunch of snakes. Could you picture me going up and saying, you a snake to the, to the top pastors? Oh, they'll, they'll be sackcloth and ashes, throwing dust up. Mm -mm, you can't talk to the man of God like that. It's an abomination. I'm going to speak it. Amen. So this is where these people are. They are, these specific demons are reserved in hell. Mm -hmm. The demons are going to try it one more time right before they know that it's over in the tribulation. They know it's no, it's like. We got to go, we going to hell anyway, so let's try to take as many people as possible. It's why God had to kill them. They were mixed with demon and human. He couldn't have that living forever, right? You're talking about somebody that could live forever and all they do is want to sin, 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 kill, 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 kill. He said, oh no. Wiped them off the face of the earth. Y'all got me. Amen. So that's not all demons, but there are some that are there. So those are the devils in hell and they're not trying to fight you, they're in right. hell. <laughs> right, waiting. They're, not, they're waiting, just <laughs> like, uh, there are four specific angels that are also um, being held, but they're not in hell. They're in, they're, I know this sounds crazy, but they're in the river Euphrates, hmm. as we speak. They're under the river Euphrates. Obviously, not physically. So if you go down in a scuba gear, right? <laughs> you know, I gotta say that because somebody be like, so you telling me my brother, if I get into some scoop, no, you're not gonna see him because they're demonic angels. And I think that it's, what it's saying is, is that probably most likely there is a gate there that will release them from that point. All right, mm -hmm. there are specific gates. And I, we, we could talk about that later, talking about uh, spiritual portals and gates that are in specific spots on earth. like. Jacob, he went to sleep and he saw a ladder and angels ascending and he saw him ascending and descending out of a portal. And he said, the Lord was here and I knew it not. That was one of the access points, right? There are many across the earth. And it seems like one is by the river Euphrates. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. We're not going to go into it because that goes into why they built the Tower of Babel there and the whole nine yards. All right. So let's get into the history of it. I hope I'm not boring y'all. If I'm boring, you let me know. Mm -hmm, no. Okay, so look, we want to talk about the history, the gulf. The Bible says that there was a gulf, a space. A gulf is a space separating two places. Mm -hmm. In the Old Testament, this is not how it is now. I'm going to show you what Jesus did. Jesus did it to change this place that was called the gulf, mm -hmm. right? And we're going to talk about each side. He removed one side, and now all that is left is hell, as we know it. Hmm. Hades and Tartarus. All right? And eventually, both hell and death itself will be cast into the lake of fire. All right? So I'm, I'm trying to show it to you. So let's read it. Jesus is going to tell a story. Let's look at it. Give it to, give a scripture and verse, Sister Trina. Uh, it's Luke 16, 19 through 31. Hmm? And it reads, there was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar 
named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, hmm. moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Carried by who? The angels. He was carried, carried by, by the angels. Into where? Into Abraham's bosom. The reason he calls it that is not talking about Abraham doesn't have breast. Right. The word has changed. Let me just give you, right? Words have evolved. That doesn't mean he had breasts, right? He's a man. But what it was saying is, is that the places in the in that we would consider heaven, they could not go. The blood of Jesus had not been shed. Jesus was serious. No man can come to the Father lest they come through him. And he had not been born yet. So they would go to a waiting place. They were waiting on the Messiah, but it was not torment. It was peace. And it was called Abraham's bosom is because Jesus would come through the lineage of Abraham. Abraham would give birth to Isaac. Isaac be begat Jacob. Jacob begat 12 sons who became the 12 tribes. One of his sons was named Judah. And through the line of Judah, Jesus came. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And so therefore they get to wait in Abraham's bosom as time goes along on earth, they're waiting in a place of joy and peace. This is what Jesus said, keep reading. Mm -hmm. uh, the rich man also died and was buried. Oh, uh, that's <laughs> different. Right. You gonna cry at a funeral, cry around somebody who just got buried. They went a bit more saved than the man on the moon. I cry every time someone dies, it's mm -hmm. not saved. Mm -hmm. Man. Like they can't get out. Yep. Yeah, they would take they would do anything on it humanly possible to get one more second that they had before. Mm -hmm. They can't get out. They're trapped. Look at this. I know we think this, but not all of our grandparents, not all of our parents, not all of our siblings. We the, the biggest lies that ever happened in church is at funerals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this dude so dope every day he killed people and he gets to go he doesn't I want him to go I would let him in that's why I'm not in charge God is in charge and he will look right to the soul and the heart and say I'm son I love you more than anybody I love you more than your mother I love you more than your father but you rejected me and if you reject me well, let's say it like this. Jesus said, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my father and the holy angels. I'll look at you and say, depart. Matter of fact, you won't even see me. The edict will come out, depart. He was buried in what happened, Sister Trina? And in hell, he lift up his eyes, being in torments and seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. By him, with him. Go ahead. Yes. And he cried out and he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. In this what? In this flame. The flames. Hmm. He wanted a sip of water. Never think about that, being thirsty forever. Mm-hmm. My Never Lord. being able to drink. Think, think about that for two seconds. Being thirsty and can't drink. Go ahead. But Abraham said, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. He was making bank. You good. Okay, now what did he say? And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great golf fix. There it is. Read that again a little bit slower. What did he say? Mm -hmm. Abraham said, look, you had a chance to do it when you were alive and you didn't do it. Now you're in torment. Then he mm -hmm. says, besides all of this, what? Between us and you, there is a great golf fix. It's fixed. It cannot be moved by me. There's a separation. So before, mm -hmm. when the Old Testament, David... Moses, Eli Elisha, 
Daniel, Jeremiah, I hate saying their names wrong, Jeremiah, Daniel, <laughs> right? All of them, Habakkuk, all of the great prophets of old, when they died, even I remember the angel saying unto Daniel, he said, go your way, and shut up the book. You're gonna die with all of the rest of the prophets that have gone on before you. And now old Daniel dies and opens his eyes in this place. It's not heaven, it's not paradise, but it's beautiful waiting. I'm waiting for the time that the son of God will be manifest. And he's waiting and Abraham is there, come, come. And all the way over a huge space, a chasm. Mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar, Pharaoh, Pharaoh's army that drowned in the Red Sea. All of them in torment and agony, all of the people that died in the flood of Noah, this rich man who was, who was nameless. This is not Lazarus who Jesus raised from the dead. This is another guy named Lazarus, mm -hmm. right? He's, he's telling this story and they're like, what? The only way Jesus, this is not in, in the Old Testament at all. Jesus is talking from eyewitness experience. He is God and he knew of this place. There is a gulf and I can't get to you. Keep reading, Sister Trina. We're going to get, get out of it. We're going to get to the next point. Go ahead. So that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. They can't, uh-huh. Neither can they pass to us. You can't come to me, I can't come to you. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That will come from thence. Mm -hmm. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. Mm -hmm. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. He stopped caring about himself. He just said, please tell everybody I know. Isn't it funny that in hell you want to tell everybody about God, but on earth you could care less. That's a problem. Our mission is to take the gospel and all of the church is saying, our mission is to sit here and look at you. Mm -hmm. mm, you know the new, this is, Thank you, Lord. You know, they was out there spreading the word of God. They had family members that were going to hell. The people of the old days, they were on a mission. Jesus said, go. He didn't say stay. He didn't say find a good church home. He said, go. Where have you heard Jesus say that? He said, the disciples, we're going to show you how to be a believer. You got to repent, be baptized, find a good church home. That ain't in the Bible. You are the church and God will appoint elders and pastors and prophets and teachers to guide you on a mission, not to preach to you good words that sound good and don't mean nothing. I was just telling people today, I heard a famous preacher, one of the famous preachers on TV. He said, the number one issue is that people in the world, the number one issue in the world, and everybody was sitting here listening. He said, the number one issue in the world is that people judge based on appearance. I said, mm -hmm. you're a liar. <laughs> the number one issue in the world is sin. Right. The number one issue in the world is a, a outright rejection of God. And here is a preacher with thousands of people telling them, you got to stop judging people by your, that's going to save you. No, if your soul is saved, you'll stop judging. That's right. If your soul is transformed, you'll stop just looking at the outward appearance and you'll look what's on the inside. Mm -hmm. Ah, man. Keep going, Sister Trina. Abraham saith unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. He got the word. <laughs> Let them hear them. And he said, nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Hmm. And he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, Neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. I don't care what you do. If God doesn't open their eyes, mm -hmm. I don't care how much you can drag them to church. You can do all of this. And eventually, I've learned to just say it to them flat out. You're on your way to hell. I don't want you to go. Turn. And then I love them. Because if God does not open their eyes, they will perish and not have everlasting life. This is a sad truth. The vast majority of the people we know today will go to hell. Mm -hmm. That's a shame. I'm going to say it again. 
the vast majority of people we see and know and live in our time will go to hell. They reject God on every hand. They praise him with their lips, but their heart is far from him. When they sin, they don't feel bad. They feel bad when the preachers, it feels like the preacher is talking to me. That's all. That's when you're in a bad spot. It feels like the preacher was, I just felt like, that means you couldn't hear God without it. And he's begging you to come. Many are called, but only a few are chosen. Why are only a few chosen? Because they, he knows every possible aspect and they're going to reject him. No matter if he raises the dead in front of them, they'll reject him. It doesn't matter if he causes an angel to come out of the sky in all gold, you know, and say, come, the Lord has sent me. They'll still reject him. It doesn't matter, no matter what. He searched in every probability, probability in every probable way to save us. And some of us only found, he only found one way to do it. And guess what he did? He used it. He set you up. That at that one moment, at the right time, at the right age, on the right day, you would hear it and your eyes would open and you turn to him. But there's some that won't listen, even if your granddaddy raises from the dead and slaps you in the face and say, boy, I'm burning in hell. You're right. on your way. They'll be like, man, I had a crazy dream last night. And go right back. All right. So this is what happened. So Jesus goes down there. I'm not going to go in depth, but what Jesus did is after he raised from the dead, he went and the Bible says he preached into the captives. Those who were down there, he preached to them. He preached to them what? The gospel. Mm -hmm. They didn't know the gospel. How could you send somebody to eternity in hell if you don't give them an opportunity to hear the word? So he did that. And guess what? I'm sure he had a hundred percent acceptance. <laughs> I'm sure when one dude down there, like, I don't really know. I know it's hot in this flame, but I don't know if I want to come down to the altar today. Everybody came down to the altar. That day. It probably wasn't an altar, but they was like, "Woo, yes, I'll go anywhere. We get, do y'all got water there, Lord? Yes, I receive you as my Lord and say, right? right. Emptied that place. He carried out those. And the Bible only specifically talks about the those who in the days of Noah sinned, but he preached unto captives, period. So they came. Mm -hmm. Abraham and all of them have now gone to heaven, and now all that is left is hell. Now, we don't get that opportunity because you have not only Moses and the prophets, the Old Testament, but you have the New Testament, you have Bibles. They didn't have the scripture. They had to go to the synagogue to hear to, for them to take each scroll out to read it. You would have to be a priest to even hold the Bible and you have one in your possession. You have preachers on TV, you have preaching here on the internet, and it's still not enough. I was telling somebody today, and I'm gonna talk about it. We are gonna talk about unfaithfulness to the kingdom of God. I was saying, if you can't be faithful to a Zoom church. Right. <laughs> You can't be faithful to come and be with us, and you can be all y'all can be in your underwear right now, and nobody would know it because we can't see your brain. I could be in mine, and you don't know. And you can't, you like, right. <laughs> really? I know it's funny, but how can the Lord get something done? He wants to mobilize right. the army to go forth and do the will. The first thing that a military, come on, my chiefs, Chief Guy, Chief Hassan. My military people, what's the first thing we do before we get ready to fight? We muster. Am I right about it? Who do who does the mustering, Brother Salim? We do. Us. <laughs> the, 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 the captain them say we mustering everybody up. Roger that, sir. Yeah. Let's go. Everybody get in line, get in ranks, all hands on deck. And now we can fight the war. But if we got to go looking for you talking about, well, I had a headache today. And right. <laughs> we'll be able to get nothing. Yes, all right. So we want to do God's will and we want to be faithful. So I'm going to just get off of that because I'm going to talk more about that when we go into the church. So we almost finished. I got two more things I want you to see. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens to hell? Mm-hmm. I didn't give you a scripture, huh, Sister Trina? I have it. I have it. You it's Revelation 20, 10 through, 10 through 15. Go ahead, read that for us. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are. Just read that one more time. I give you ah, ah, my favorite scripture in the Bible. Yes. Read it. 
And the devil that deceived them oh, was that first word and the who and the devil. What's going to happen? What did he do to the people? That he deceived them. Uh huh. Was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Stop right there. Let me just take that in real quick. <laughs> He is the person that it was made for. So I like to hear that one more time. So he gets, so I thought the devil was just the man. No. Uh -huh. He was cast. That means somebody threw him. <laughs> Jesus didn't have to throw him. God didn't have to throw him. That's, he's, he's, the Lord is like, take care of my light work, Michael. Mike is like, I got you, Lord, watch this. Picked him up. <laughs> my granddaddy used to do that. You cuss in this house. He would grab you by your britches and by your collar and pick you up off of the ground. He was 200 some pounds. And next thing you know, you go to flying like old boy on the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Ah! You go, <laughs> right, he's out his house. That's how they gonna throw the devil in. He gonna look like old right. Jazzy Jeff, ah! falling in the hell, amen. And I'm gonna be like, hoo, hoo, hoo. I'm gonna be pumped about it. All right, keep going. It says, and where the beast and the false prophet are. My favorite too, go ahead. And shall be tormented day and night and forever what? and ever. And shall what? Shall be tormented. The devil gonna be tormented. Tormented. And the false prophet. And the antichrist, the beast, yes. right? Yes. For, for how long? Forever and ever. Forever, ever? Take forever, that ever, ever. There you go, forever, ever. There we go. Right. Right. Forever, ever, ever, ever. You can just say forever once. Right. <laughs> so he didn't gave you two forevers. That means you ain't never coming out. Amen. Amen. All right, go ahead, keep reading. And I saw a great white throne hmm. and, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. Ooh, keep reading. And there was found no place for them. Mm -hmm. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, mm. and another book was opened. This is the one. Which is the book of life. Uh huh. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. The dead so were what? They were judged. You're going to be judged. Yes. <sighs> He's getting ready to evaluate it. Go ahead, keep going. Judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works, according to their faith. No, according to their works. According to how many times they went to church. Mm -mm, according to their works, what they did for Jesus. According to how much scripture they me memorized. No, no, no. The works that they did for Jesus. What did you do? Amen. He didn't say that's your purchasing into heaven. That's not. But he's going to judge you. He's going to look at your work. What did you do? Mm -hmm. What did you think about it? Take a second and analyze. If God had to analyze what you've done so far, what would he say? My Lord. What would he say? You don't have to tell me, but think about it. I think about that every day. You can ask my wife. Sometimes it frustrates me because I'm like, I got to, if I die tomorrow, I'm not satisfied with what I've done so far. Amen. You think I'm satisfied? I want to re, even if they all reject, I want to reach every continent on planet Earth and tell them what is to come. They don't, they could all say, no, nah, we good, but I did my job. Mm -hmm. Amen. And he yes. can look at me and say, you did it. Yeah. I had many other people that were assigned and they refused to do it, but you did it. The Lord told me once I was being unfaithful to his end time movement and he yelled it and screamed it. It, it petrified me so much. I thought I was about to die. I thought God was about to kill me. Do you hear what I'm saying? And this mm -hmm. is not awake. I was in a dream. And he said it with so much force. The house, the ground shook. And I said, I'm not, I'm not being unfaithful. He's like, are you going to really die with all this information that's getting ready to happen? you just never going to tell anybody else. You're just going to tell the, the 31 people that's on here and that's it. A few right. of your friends on Facebook. Right. You really want to do that, huh, son? Why did I waste my time mm -hmm. telling you and teaching you this for you to sit down? Oh, man. That's why for much is given, much is required. The worst mm -hmm. thing you could ever did is got on this Zoom with me. Right. <laughs> because you didn't it. 
You have heard him, and if you don't do anything, he's going to come right back to you, and he probably got a copy of all these Zooms. I don't know. It's in the cloud. Yeah. But it's up in the cloud. He's going to be breaking it out. On this day, you learned about hell. On this yes. Episode, any what you do with it. About it. That's why I love old brother David. He didn't know all of it, but he was like, do y'all know it's more than one hell? Right. <laughs> one heaven? And his friends was like, I don't know. He was like, I, he said, Apostle, I might have jumped out there a little early. But at least he tried. At least he fell forward. Right. right. Exactly. Right. And we right. gave him the scriptures, and then his friends were able to see it. Now, even if they all rejected, they heard it. They saw it. Mm-hmm. So sure enough. Glory to God. Glory to God. Keep reading, Sister Trina. We got to get to my part. Yep. And, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. And what? Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. How big is the lake of fire that you can throw hell yeah, into it? Got to be pretty big. Hell... According to the scripture, enlar is enlarging itself. So many people going into it. It was created for the devil and his angels. Mm -hmm. So many people are choosing to follow Satan. That it is, God is enlarging it. He's mm -hmm. adding to do, you know where he doesn't have to do add-ons? <laughs> New Jerusalem. Because mm -hmm. it's only a few. Man. I want all my family and friends to reject or accept Jesus Christ. I don't Amen. want them to, you know, in the, in the NBA, they have where you, they have three statuses in the NBA. You can play, you cannot play, whether it be injury or you're just not there, or you can be on the DMP list, which means you're in the building, you're on the bench, but you are scheduled for the entire game to do not play. play. DNP. You're in uniform. You're healthy to play. But the coach looked at you and said, nah, I'm not going to play him at all. Do you want God to look at you and say, nah, I'm straight? Mm -hmm. He or she can't even be faithful to this. Why would I use them? Why would I use somebody that I don't know if they're going to be there? Right. Oh, man. This is why right. I said the best ability is availability. The Amen. very best ability that you can have. You can know the scriptures, and I know I'm pretty good. I mean, I'm not the best of the best, but I know it pretty good. But it doesn't matter if I'm not available. Right. Man, I, get, I know guys who get high every day, who sell, do all of the craziest stuff in the world. They know the Bible inside and out. Yeah, man, they're not available. Mm. They want to do their own thing and they're not available and God will never use them. You know what's even worse? God will take somebody that don't even know half of what you know. Yes. Use them. Mm -hmm. the thousands and millions into the king to do what you were supposed to do. Amen. Death and hell are going to be cast into the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. And all of the people we know that are unsaved are scheduled to go there upon death. Mm-hmm. This is what, and, and keep reading. This is the second death. This is the what? The second death. We don't die. We sleep in Jesus. <laughs> My Lord. The dead in Christ are called they who sleep in Jesus. That's because Jesus will one day raise us to everlasting life. We have life perpetual. How many mm -hmm. of y'all are alive right now? Mm -hmm. You will be alive <laughs> forevermore. Even when you die, the real you will never die. But when they die, their bodies are buried because it's dead. And then their soul goes to, the, to hell mm. because hell is the second death. You are a person that lived death and now you shall die. The real you. Adam, the day you eat of this tree and break my rule. Mm -hmm. Adam, Adam was destined to go to hell for biting a piece of fruit. You think God is not going to send somebody to go to hell who gets high? Right. He bit a piece of fruit that God said, don't eat. The tree of life had 12 different types of fruit. He never touched one of them. He could have ate the tree of life and lived for eternity and just left the garden and went skipping into the rest of the world. But instead, he and his wife had to go and get a piece of that forbidden fruit. If he, put, if he was willing to put Adam in hell for eating a piece of fruit, what do you think he's going to do to our world? Seven people right, just got burned. Right. 
Do you think that man is on his way to heaven? How many of them who got murdered opened their eyes in hell? They were innocent blood, but they were not innocent of sin. Mm -hmm. They opened their eyes in eternity. I'm going to leave this alone, but I used to keep a, a, a timer on my computer. It started in Japan. I don't have it anymore, but I think about it every day. Approximately 250,000 people die every single day. We don't notice it because there is a birth rate. There are people that are being born at the same time. There are people come, and, and it's almost like if you have a, 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 a pot that has a hole in it, you pour water in it, in it, and as you pour water in it, water is coming out the bottom. Mm -hmm. There are people literally, two hundreds of thousands that are going off and Jesus said the majority of them are going to the place we just read about. I didn't tell you about all of the torment and I'm not, I'm not gonna do it. I might make a little video and you can watch it. But the people in hell, he cre the Bible says he creates, he prepares them a worm that literally torments them, eats them. It might not be one, it could be several. They're in fire. Mm. They're surrounded by brimstone. Brimstone is sulfur and it suffocates you. <gasps> can't breathe, can't die. Thirsty, the rich man was thirsty. He never rested, he was tormented. Picture this, picture being without rest. For day. Look at this, a spirit, our spirit being saved, we won't need to sleep. But in hell, he keeps you with all of your same earthly desires mm. and wants. I'm hungry and can't eat. Mm -hmm. I'm thirsty and can't drink. I'm on fire. I can't die. Mm -hmm. I'm being eaten. I can't die. I miss my loved ones. I'm reminded of what I could have done. And the worst of it all, no matter what, God won't answer. Yeah. You could cry out in repentance. He won't answer. You could curse him. It's probably some people who have gone through the stages of death and now they're at the point where they're just cursing God 24-7. It matters not. It's deafening down there. And obviously the flame doesn't give you light because the Bible calls it outer darkness. Could you picture being in darkness forever? And then that place is cast into the lake of fire. Mm. A lake, an ocean, mm. where you just... Satan, Lucifer, you're there with demons. That's who was supposed to be there. And you're there. And I could think that, some, look at this. I don't know why this just came to my mind, but I could think of a person falling into that pit and remembering as a child, hearing the song, Jesus loves me this. Mm -hmm. All the time they didn't turn. For the Bible tells me so, look to one. The very thing they thought was fake, mm -hmm. it happened. And guess what? They can't tell anybody they know. They want to tell them. Look, I remember I was, the, look, the Lord showed me this. I'm not going to say this particular person's name, but I, everybody on here knows this particular person. I had this dream where the Lord, the Lord uh, in dreams, and this is prophetic, like prophetic dream understanding. I don't know. I don't know if y'all can hear that, but the military is doing some training. Yeah. <laughs> I can't get mad. That Navy blood is going in me like, yeah, I've gone. Let's go get my aviator shape. Anyway, so <laughs> the chief in me is like, do them exercises. Hurry up. All right. So I had this dream. And in this dream, I was in this place. It was like dark. It was not dark, but it was kind of light. It was no moon. The ground was like rocky, just rocky. And there was a building there. Building looked like a dull brown 
apartment type factory building. And you know, the factory building, they have the, the things where you can let down the thing and climb up the stairs on the outside. I don't forget, I don't know what they are called. Fire escape, fire escape. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going there and I went up the fire escape and I went into one place and it was like they were dressed as, it was Christmas. Everybody was saying Christmas songs. And then the next place it was like Halloween and I got up out of there. And then one of the places, it was a room, it was a level where there was a bunch of stars, like singers, people that we know. They were all sitting around. It was like, yeah, we doing a birthday. Da, 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 da. And I was like, okay, cool, it's birthday. And it was this particular man's birthday. Famous man, I know him. They were cutting cake. And then I was like, okay, I'm about to go. I don't even know why I'm here. I'm just getting ready to leave. And when I left, he left with me. He said, I'm gonna go with you. So we went downstairs and all of a sudden, when we were downstairs on the ground, looking at the house, all of a sudden we look and on the ground, the people from the party are now there. And I looked at them and my eyes were open. And I said, these are not people. <laughs> these, I, these are not normal people. They were doing things that were weird with their, their movements. Their movements were, were off. Hmm. He didn't see anything. And he was dressed up in the Halloween outfit because he just came from out. And all of a sudden, all of the Halloween guys come down playing like, oh man. They were laughing and joking and playing and with each other. And then I kind of just found myself back. I didn't walk. I just was back away from them. And then these things start grabbing this dude. And he was like, man, quit playing. Why y'all grab him? And they kept grabbing him and it got rougher and rougher. But as it was happening, it was going dark. And then this one thing, he it's like, I can almost see it today. He grabbed this, looked like a, it was a cube almost, but it was long and slender. It was thick and I could tell the edges were sharp. And he started to hit him and he put his arm up and it was digging all the way into his arm. <sighs> and the last image I saw was him being pulled off, pulled off and he was shaking his head and I woke up and it was like the Lord was saying the urgency. Cause you don't see it. You don't care about it. Right. How many people have been shot up this year in mass shootings and we don't even think about it. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Yeah, Just being yeah. that one person, ba, 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 and you're on the ground. You want somebody to care mm -hmm. about your life, your breath. And all of those people, some of those people are falling into the pit of hell right, and the church right. is asleep. This is what I'm trying to say to you. They're playing church. We clap and they go to hell. Mm -hmm. We dance and they go to hell. We sacrifice them on the altar of hell while we praise and thank the Lord. I believe in praising the Lord, but not if I'm not doing anything. What am I dancing about? Right. You ain't did nothing. But no, we, we counted the money at the church. What did the money go to? Did it go to saving any souls? Well, it went to our building fund. Did the building get you? How many people got baptized this year, brother? Right. Uh, one. One. One, how many people did you talk to? How many people did your congregation talk to, brother pastor? I don't know mm -hmm. because it's not important to me enough for me to track it. Do y'all see it? You, if it was important, you would be tracking how many people we're going out to, how many people we're baptized, how many people are being filled with the Holy Ghost, how many people are we reaching? We raise money for everything except for using social media to run paid ads to try to win the loss. Right. There are some, but it's only a little bit. But we'll charge you for a ticket to come and see your favorite singer. Right. <laughs> That's important. But let a young brother be high. Need somebody to talk to at night. Let a transgender person walk in your church. Say, I just want to be saved. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do with that? Deal with that elder. You ain't going to hear that from me, KGN. 
You call me, I'm stopping what I'm doing. The, it was, it's my job, it's my passion. Let us talk, let us use Zoom. I've been on Zoom with just one person. Jesus would leave the 99 to talk to one person and you too big to talk to one person because they gay or because they own drugs or because they own, it's an abomination, they're going to hell. And I'm gonna leave it at that. I want to give you these last couple of scriptures. You can read them on your own. But this is what, look, I'm gonna read this one. It, it, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. Paul said, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Then he gives a warning. Be not deceived, neither fornicators nor idolaters nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, or revilers or extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. That's fact. Mm -hmm. How many of y'all know people that fit those bills? Mm -hmm. Go and try to save them and let them tell you no. Get a yes or a definite no. Don't leave uncertain. That's what Jesus did. Okay. Rich man, sell all you have and come follow me. You gotta give up all this stuff, all your life, all the stuff you think you wanna do, you gotta give it all up, repent, Turn to Jesus and follow him and leave it all behind. Are you willing to do that and wait for an answer? If you are, I'll let you know how. If they say no and walk away like the rich man did, do as Jesus did. He let him walk off. Because I would rather you know you're going to hell than to be in the church unrepentant on your way to hell and think you're going to heaven. Think about the people that think they're on their way to heaven and they're not. They, mm -hmm. think, okay, they think God wants cursing. He doesn't mind cursing and getting drunk. He don't mind clubbing. Do you know the Bible says that if you go to those celebrations or cabarets and those things, the Bible mentions that it's one of the things that will cause you to go to hell. It's one of the sins. Mm -hmm. you think God doesn't know he he his club in Ma Mary's day. <laughs> The same stuff was going on. It was some different music. Ding, 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 ding. Right now it's boo, boo. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. God knows. Mm -hmm. If you look at this, if you want to be a drunk, go where the drunks go. Drunkards shall not mm -hmm. inherit the kingdom of God. You want to join this group? You want to be, be a thief? Go where thieves go. Want to be a fornicator? I heard a pastor say, picture being in hell and wanting to fornicate and can't. Your body's full of lust and you can never satisfy your lust. Want to drink, having withdrawals for the rest of your life and you can't. Nope, torment. Why would a loving God do this? Why would he do that? That's a question that people always ask. Why would a loving God do this? Because just as loving as he is, he's just as just. And he gave you a way of escape, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we're, we're supposed to tell that this is why I'm going to start. I'm going, I'm, I'm telling these pastors to their face. I'd rather them hate me. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling you to do it. Amen. I'm a pastor. I talk to pastors. I tell them to their face. You a mess. You didn't preach seven months and you, you only talk about the resurrection during Easter. <laughs> How is anybody getting saved? You, it's a concert. You come in, you hallelujah. Oh, we love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Nobody gets saved. Nobody right. gets healed. Nobody gets filled with the Holy Ghost. Nobody, nobody. They feel a change in their heart. But if you shut the churches down, they'll backslide. Right. Because they're addicted to church not addicted to Jesus, but man, I'm addicted to the water of life that flows freely from the throne of God into my mm -hmm. belly, 
into your ears. Hallelujah. And God wants you to take that same living water. Yes. Said, church, and you need all the lights. You got to have lights. Oh, yeah. They call them church stage uh, uh, design. I, I see them all the time. I was getting mm -hmm. ready to get one of the Lord said, what, you, what are you doing? You need that. You need lights when you don't have me. You need to you need to stage the laser lights and you got to have the they have lights that come up. You you take light strips and you put them in designs. I don't know if you noticed this and the lights go down and they have smoke machines. Right. And lights that come up like you at a concert and it's holy. Yep. holy. Are you living holy? I remember being at a church and somebody went up to a dude that had just got ordained and said, what is quail? The Bible says that God gave them quail. He said, I think it's fish. Yep. I want to take his ordination lights and burn it up. But he, <laughs> and he just didn't know what quail was. He's actually a real believer. <laughs> but I said, brother, you get, I'm an elder. I don't know nothing. Tell me about heaven. Do you know believers? Many mm -hmm. of you all, no more than some pastors about heaven and hell now. If your job is to equip people to take them from hell to heaven, you should probably know something about, <laughs> I'm just throwing, them out, throwing it out there. If it's in your job description, if you fix typewriters, you need to know about, anybody know what you should know about? Typewriters, thank you, Prophet. Yeah. I get you tell me how to use it? Oh, I don't know how to type. That right. Everybody, I can't swim. They was like, you did 20 years in the Navy. I said, no. <laughs> walk on water or something, you know. I, I can, amen. Glory to God. But we're going to end it there, believers. But look, I just wanted to end it on a light note, but I wanted you to see the urgency of now. Mm -hmm. We're getting ready to talk about. And it ain't even getting ready because I've been saying it for two years. I've been biting, chomping at the bit. You can ask my wife, wanting to launch it, launch it, because this is good teaching, right? But Amen. Good teaching everywhere. How many teaching CDs can you do? How many YouTube videos can you watch on great teachers? Right. That can teach better than me, preach better than me, do all of that, organize better than me. I'm not trying to do any of that. What I'm trying to do is mobilize you. Jesus mm -hmm. had 12 and changed the world. We can change it. And we're going to talk about it. We're going to not only talk about it. I'm going to send you those who want to be a part. I'm going to send you the information. You review it. And then we're going to literally help you implement a mission. We're not going to go to Africa or, or, and I love going to Africa. I'm not going to shoot a shot at my brothers and sisters in Kenya. God bless y'all. You know, I love y'all, but we're not going there right now. We're not going to India. We got a bunch of pastors over there that are submitted to us, 58 pastors right over there that we love dearly. We're not going to the mission field over there. Chicago needs some, some fishing. We need to get them dudes. Phoenix, where you are, and we're going to show you how to do it. The most inefficient way to witness is passing out tracks. Mm -hmm. But this is not me. This is literally a study, the most, in, when you give an American some paper, they throw it away. Yeah. And this is the level of, if you go and you stand on the street corner and talk, it can reach people, but most likely you won't reach half of them. We're gonna mm. reach everybody. All right. In your city. We're gonna tell you, I'm not gonna tell you not because we online. This ain't for everybody. I don't, some people teach, I don't want nobody to learn that. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. We want to tell them what's getting ready to happen. We're going to tell them what's happening in the world right now, why it's right. happening, what's getting ready to come prophetically. We're going to tell them the blueprint mm -hmm. to be free and to be with God, repent, be baptized in Jesus' name, be filled with the Holy Ghost. And then we're going to show them how to go out and do it all over again. Mm -hmm. the Case closed. If you want to do that, that's what we're going to do. If you don't want to do that, just take your pick. It's a billion churches that don't do that. Right. <laughs> we're going to be a part of the ones that does do that. Amen. If you Amen. want a church in your area that is doing that, then help us do it. 
Yeah. They say, Lord, send us. Ooh, we need a church. And the Lord is like, boy, you there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you right there. And I was praying. I said, Lord, we need some, Lord, send laborers into the house. <laughs> My mama remember that. I was like 14 years old. Lord, send laborers. Oh, in the name of Jesus. I was on fire. And then the Lord, after I came out the spirit, which was probably just emotion. <laughs> Holy I came out to this my emotion. I said, and the Lord said, they're right outside. <laughs> <laughs> I opened my eyes and looked up. And I, was like, I grabbed my Bible and was like, "My bad, Lord, I'll be back after I." Held <laughs> 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 for seven days straight. Nobody wanted to talk to me. People was laughing at me, joking me, and then I became a master at it from failing. Mm -hmm. they wow. at me and joked me, and then I learned. Okay, don't take your Bible. You probably should learn it. So when people ask me how I learned the Bible, it was out of force necessity. Mm -hmm. in front of stores because they can kick you out it's called trespassing learn that at seven stores <laughs> okay <laughs> so look we want to do it the right way we want Amen. you to do it so look that's what we want to do we're going to end it here we're at exactly 6 30 uh we are finished with this series the heaven and hell series we're going to talk about we're going to talk about fathers mm -hmm. Sunday, I, I had to do that normally i wouldn't do it fathers keep getting them shirts and that's all we get y'all gonna get a good sermon out of me <laughs> y'all got songs mama you know I right don't, right I don't want rolling stone <laughs> right <laughs> when he died all he left was alone you'd be like lord do i want to be a daddy so we're gonna give some daddy some love <laughs> Hey man, this is good. <laughs> do it pretty good. I think I'm gonna go down to the studio and probably have on a little something and pop and amen, praise the Lord, and do it good. And we'll, <laughs> and then we're gonna talk about the definition. We gonna, it's gonna be very brief. It's not a full series. I'm not even know if we're gonna call it a series. It's gonna be where you're gonna learn how the church was meant to function. Mm -hmm. You hear me talk about it, but then we, we're gonna show you scripture very quickly how we did hell. In one day, we'll do, it'll be like one day, two day, review these videos on how we're going to move forward. Mm -hmm. And then those who are willing, we meet, and then we begin to launch. Okay. Amen. Amen. I hope you all excited. Yes. <laughs> Can't wait. Jesus. Amen. So that's what we're going to do. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everybody that is online, everybody that is watching. I pray that you would raise up laborers to go to into the harvest. Father, the harvest is plenteous. It's been plenteous since, since you were on earth walking. But the laborers in every generation have been few. I pray in these last days that you would give us the former and the latter rain in the first month, that you would give us the latter rain as we are coming towards the end, that you poured out your spirit upon on the, the believers in Jerusalem in the day, on the day of Pentecost, that now you will pour out your spirit upon all flesh across all of the United States, across every country, in, in every part of the world, that in these last days that you will pour out your spirit. Even into the tribulation, you will pour out your spirit. The two witnesses will prophesy in those days, three and a half years, and many souls will come to Christ. So many will come to Christ that John said, I saw a number that no man could number out of every kindred, nation, and tongue. And then you, the angel, asked him, Lord, who are these? And he said that these are days who came out of great tribulation, many souls will come out. We are the beginning of that. I believe that, Father. So I pray that you would raise up laborers, people who are tired of yes. doing it the same way. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes. After day, Sunday after Sunday, another Wednesday. Another yes. Sunday, we're going in year after year. My attendance is all that matters. But now I am attending to the field, the mission field. I won't have to go and stand on the street corner, but I'm going to learn a way that I can help your end time movement. And Father, I pray this in the name of Jesus. And for those who are online right now, I want to talk to you specifically, my friend. You are on your way to that place called hell, and you know it. You're not in right standings. If you died today, it would be over. The Bible says to repent. It means to change your mind. The way you did it before, it's all wrong. It's hard to say that. But it's all wrong. Lord, only what you say is right. And this is what the Lord says. He says that if you believe in your heart, mm -hmm. God has raised Jesus from the dead. If you confess him as Lord, you will be saved. 
And then he teaches you to be baptized after that in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Mm -hmm. That word is removal, forgiveness and removal of your sins. And you shall receive the gift yes. of the Holy Ghost. If you want that, I want you to pray with me now and say, Father, save me. I repent of my sins. I turn to you. I'm, I was wrong. You're right. I believe that you raised your son Jesus from the dead. I confess that he is my Lord and my Lord, my ruler, my owner, my yes. king. Save me. In Jesus' name. Amen. I pray you prayed that prayer. I know I did. I turned to him. And I turned to him after I walked away as a preacher. So I know if, if he can do it for me, he can do it for you. God bless you, Facebook. Take care. Share this video. Maybe somebody will watch it. All right. Take care. All right. I'm done, y'all. Amen. This was a long Amen. one. Amen. It's the last one of the series. It was a good one. Amen. Y'all can unmute. Y'all are so muted. I don't know if you can be so muted, but you muted. <laughs> you know, after all these years, I got on a little late. This is Gwen. I had to, uh, ran to a phone call, but after all these years of he hearing about hell, if you didn't paint a picture in anybody else's mind, you said some things on there and you know, and then I'm like, man, that's the that's the real person's thought. You know, just thinking about what you oh, I'm falling. Can I tell my friends? You can't even, you can't do nothing. And then you just some of the things you were saying, just you know, and I know about hell, but the way you I'm telling you, I'll praise God for you for the teaching and the way you do it. Because you just me in hell going down to hell right there. Yes. Saying, mm -hmm. Lord, come on, whatever. If there's something else left in me, help me out, Jesus. I need you. Amen. Yeah, help me to turn. But you you painted that picture very well. So I'm just praying that somebody out there got right. and did pray that prayer uh, of, of forgiveness on there. You know, yeah. It was a lot, but I, I is that's why we record it. You can go back and look at it. Go back and look at it. Go back and look at it. Amen. It's the, it's a, it look, it's not, it's, hell has always been there, but the urgency is now. Yes. I don't know if I can express that enough. And it's always been there, uh, Apostle, but like Gwen said, the way you explained it, people heard it all, for, you know, for years and years, but the way it was explained tonight, made it real we've been hearing fairy tales for years yeah <laughs> that's what it was it was make fairy it tale all, this yeah. you made it real this is real amen yeah yes it is yes it is i think I, and you know what uh sister trina i i it, there's some fairy tales in there too i believe but i also believe some people are just you know they have oral tradition of telling, <laughs> you, you maintain history through telling based on what you heard before and you pray right. that on. And that's the difference I think is, and I know this is my brother, the apostle, <laughs> but- That was funny. This is from, what he's talking about is <laughs> rightly dividing the word of truth. He don't be Right. He dove in, and what, and and if we, I mean, he's telling us, but we got to dive in too. Yeah, amen. I mean, yeah. We got to dive in. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So because you know, a lot of times we tell people what we think we know, and I tell you, I had this uh, my my what you call it thing, the person that does your back when you have a masseuse, chiropractor, <laughs> chiropractor. <laughs> okay. So my chiropractor years ago, I asked her uh, what she thought about the uh, what is it? What is that health care plan that, uh, that uh, they call it Obamacare, but it's not Affordable Care uh, Act. Yeah, Affordable Health Care Act. I asked her about that, and she says, "Oh no," she says, "No, it's not very good." Hmm. And I could tell when she said it, she did not know 
what it she didn't well, have an idea mm-hmm. she was telling me what she heard right mm-hmm. and i think a lot of times we tell people what we heard what rather we heard. than what we exactly. know yeah. and that's 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 why we think he's willing to will in the middle of the wheel because <laughs> <laughs> right. Because one, when you read it, you're gonna be so mad. I was so mad because that was my favorite song. Okay, go ahead, keep going. Well, no, because, <laughs> because no, because that makes some sense. We it's a whole lot of stuff right. that is just God said. If you make one step, I make yeah, two. I make two, and He ain't said nothing like that. Cliches, <laughs> cliches, yeah. <Carly>, yep, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, if we want to do something about it, we got to do something about it. Amen. We can't Amen. change. We're not changing anything. God mm-hmm. uses it. God, Jesus, I mean, Paul said, even if somebody, he said, if you all get saved through my, my preaching and I'm bad, to God be the glory. Or if you get Amen. saved through my preaching and I'm good, <laughs> to God be the glory. Right. So God is using them jokers to save folks, but they're going to get in trouble when they stand before the Lord because you didn't tell them everything. So we're not trying to change anybody. I'm not trying to change no. anybody. I am not trying to change or go to the church at all. No. Right? I'm just doing, this is what I and Prophet is one that are trying to do. Mm-hmm. The Lord said to do. Reach everybody, the sinner, and then call, one clarion call to the people in the church. Whoever wants to help, mm-hmm. come. First and last call. You know what they say when we was in the club? Last call. Last call. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You were there. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> now, some of y'all said that last call. Oh. Yeah. And alcohol. <laughs> exactly. Oh, when we going to wait to after the tribulation to start right. doing it? Okay. So make the, we make the one call. Whoever will come, they'll come. If they don't, we, we have now changed our mindset. We're looking mm-hmm. towards the world. We're using our money towards it. We're using mm-hmm. all of our money towards it. Okay. Yeah. It's the, the whole of the entirety of it is going towards that. If we meet, it's to win souls. Amen. We're not meeting for services for Christians. Right. We're meeting okay. to win souls. And then while we're there, we're going to get our shout on and praise on and all of that. But we're not going. it's not going to be we come in there for us. And oh, yeah, we have Christians, be non-believers too, that we're going to invite. No, crusade for Jesus Christ, amen. So that's what we're doing, y'all, and I'm excited about it. And uh, it is, it is now. So before you heard me talk about always oh, coming, it is here. Yeah. Oh, I go in Saturday, pray for me. I go in Saturday into the studio. I'm gonna lock in after our prayer with the Indian pastors. We're gonna be, I'm gonna be recording all of the videos. Well, how are we supposed to do this? Are you gonna tell us? Uh, yes, that's my okay. job. <laughs> <laughs> tell everybody it's gonna be me and prophet it's like oh these videos so good <laughs> amen so look here's a quick announcement the the california squad socal we're meeting tomorrow we have hey. a very much thing here it's gonna be off the chain i got a feeling i'm paying <laughs> Oh, that's exciting. It's very exciting for everybody but me. I'm just playing. It's exciting for me. You know what? I'm excited. I'm just, I can't wait to get everybody together and just love and hug on them. Right. We're praying for that. Praying for, I want you guys to pray for the pastors in India. Please pray for that. They're part of Kingdom Global Fellowship, an arm of KAGN. And Mm -hmm. it is, they're up to, let me see, it's 58 in India. Well, five in Pakistan. All right. My little squad in Pakistan. They'd be like, what's up, Papa, Mama? They call us Papa and Mama. That was, <laughs> mm-hmm. I love them to heaven and back. So pray for them in India because they're the Lord fulfilled words. They are having a horrible time with COVID. Mm. Burning yeah. bodies yeah. in the capital. Yeah. Outside. Just doing what? burning bodies in the in the capital, the putting them mm-hmm. all in a dirt ditch, pouring gasoline and, and burning them to burning them up. You know, and some people can't even see their loved ones. They just die, get burned up. You never see right. them. Right. You don't see them again. They, they've been praying. We pray every Saturday. Mm. Don't try to get on because it's not this one. <laughs> Come in. Glory to God, everybody. You dare pro- apostle. Anyway, we're not going to do that. So we're praying every Saturday. And this is what the Lord has done. None of them have died. Bless them. One guy, guys, yes. we prayed for him. 
Eve's back to normal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and everything the Lord has said happened. The Lord said, we when we first came on, the Lord had me to prophesy and tell him, the Lord said he's going to be sending vaccines from everywhere. Mm -hmm. found out they got vaccines coming from China, from America, from Russia, from all over, just as the Lord said. And they're all like, oh, wow. and they're reaching out to their friends, pastors, and they're coming and they're getting, we're going to mobilize them to do missions in India. Mm -hmm. in right. Pakistan. So please pray for them as well. And that's all I have. Prophetess, you have anything? Oh, I'm good. I'm just thankful for all of you that have been <clears throat> committed and faithful and dedicated to to getting us launched out we thank god for you all man can i say something i i just it's been bothering me i heard when we were talking about um well i know what heaven what hell is now the word pastor god used to always tell us this study Mm -hmm. so yourself approve. not somebody else right yourself approve a workman needs is not you know <laughs> right. you yes. exactly how you explain hell tonight i always i just knew it was that's how it was mm -hmm. you can't it's a fight it's not a, but it's not a fight you know what i'm saying you ain't up in flame and it's it's i always thought of it like volcano lava mm -hmm. the brimstone i always mm -hmm. thought of it as like volcano lava you see it sometimes you see a, a flicker of fire come up but it's both it's just you can't you can't get be miles you from smoke, you, yeah. it'll, it'll take your breath away and that's like you were saying, uh, Prophet, I mean, uh, Apostle, how you, you can't breathe. You're in misery. Yeah. Because you can't get that air that you need in to push it out. Yeah. You can't get it because that heat, walking someplace that's real hot, it takes your breath away. It does. <clears throat> it just... It stifles you is what the word I was looking for. It stifles you. I always felt that's what it was. I just always felt it. I don't just, I just, I listen to what a lot of people say, on, you know, comments and everything. But if you don't study yourself, yourself. Mm -hmm. you got to study for yourself. None of this would be such a big shock to you if you hear a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept upon precept. You got to get in there, cut it, dig in it, you know, and find out what's in that. Right. If you're not a researcher, if you're not a digger, you ain't going to get it. I don't care who tell you or how much you study. You ain't going to get it if you don't research it. Yeah. Now that's just my personal opinion. I could be wrong, <laughs> but it worked. It's working for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Just take this. Go back and look at the videos. You were here. Go back and pull them out and grab your Bible mm -hmm. and stop and pray. Right. Mm -hmm. Get your dictionaries. Get your thesauruses. I have like, and I, it ain't bragging. Good I night. got like twenty something Bibles. A lot of them are different variations, so you can break it down. Yeah, absolutely. You can break it down. If you NIV, ES, the EBS, English, ESB, in English Standard Version, you got a, a Amplified, you got the message, all kind of stuff. Go I field. got, huh? Go feel. Go feel. That's a good one. Very good. That's Bible. King James Scofield. Scofield. I that was my first Bible. Long, 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 long time ago. Yeah, I'm afraid you to open it up and the pages might tear apart. <laughs> so, but Amen. you know, you, you got to get in there. You Amen. got to dig and mm -hmm. you got to say, hey, I ain't going to do that. You can do that. If that's what you want to do, peace out, deuces, however you want to say it. I ain't going that route. Right. I don't mm -hmm. like heat myself right now. You know, okay. I don't like when I go to hell, if I go to hell. <laughs> I know. Oh, I, I know that's right. 
Woo! Let you be proud. You be playing all the way. Oh, I can't do that. My hair would be frazzled. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think your hair is going to be gone if you're going to just going to be gone. Right. So we're going to go ahead and go. I know it's getting late. Mm -hmm. Now, me, it's only 649 here in California. Yeah, it's, 10, oh. it's 949 here. Yes, right. You guys, amen. <laughs> so, Father, in Jesus' name, bless everybody. Keep them. Cause your face to shine upon them and protect them from all of these uh, shootings and things like that. Protect them, Lord. Don't yes, let them yes. out. Let the angel of the Lord encamp around about them in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless Amen. you. Amen. Love you guys.